Can you tell us what this year's laureates are awarded for? So the, the topic of this year's prize is auctions, both in theory and in practical applications. And this is an important prize because auctions are everywhere. Uh, I mean, we have seen during the, during the presentation here, we saw several examples of this. So every time you open your computer, for example, you will see advertisements on your, when you open internet. Uh, these are sold to you by auctions. At the same time, when you, when you open your browser, someone is placing a bid to show you ads. Whenever you pay your electricity bill, the price is determined by the outcome of different auctions. Nowadays, uh, the European Union and many other parts of the world sell uh, emission allowances for CO2. So indirectly, uh, auctions also affect the air we breathe because depending on the outcome of the auction, it will be more or less expensive to buy these emission allowances, which, which will affect our entire uh, global uh, environment. Um, auctions is a centuries, I would say, old form of selling and buying things. So why do you need to design them? <laughs> That's a very good question. So, so the first auctions were documented more than 2,500 years ago in uh, ancient uh, Babylon and in China and uh, in uh, the Roman Empire and, and other places. So you're absolutely right. But uh, today's society is much more complex than the society were 2,500 years ago when people bought and sold, say, potatoes and vegetables and things like that using auctions. Today we need to you know, divide the, the spectrum band into different uh, parts so different telecom operators can, can provide broadband services to their customers. And uh, one way to do that is to, is, to, is to sell spectrum using auctions. And this is very, very complicated because it, it involves like hundreds of different licenses, uh, multiple buyers, and also these different licenses complement each other, so you are only interested to buy licenses in one part of the country if you can get licenses also in, in another part of the country. So the, the type of markets we have seen developed over the last 2,500 years are so much more complex than they were back then. So therefore we need to, we need to design new auction formats, even though some of the classical auctions are still around. How, how would you explain this price to a child, like 10 years old, maybe? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a difficult question, but, but, but let me have a go at least. So, and then I can show it to my kids and see if they understand afterwards. So, so uh, this year's price is about buying and selling. And you can buy and sell things in different ways. The problem that is analyzed in this year's price is that sometimes you don't know the value of the thing that you're buying or selling that will be revealed somewhere in the future. So let me take you a very simple example. So suppose that I will have like a, 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 a jar of glass and I will fill it with, with coins. All of us can see that it's worth something, right? Because you can see that this is a jar full of coins. But very few of us can understand exactly how many coins that there are in this jar. And this price is about trying to figure out how you should uh, determine using auctions how many coins there are in that jar. So that, that's a, you know, a very basic explanation and you know, serious auction theorists will probably not take that explanation seriously, but something like that. So you put a bid on something you don't know the value yeah, of? Yeah, you don't know the value. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. And, and you need to put a bid, but you can also learn something from other people. You know, suppose that some of the bidders brought the scale to the auction, so they can actually measure, take the measurement of this jar. And then you can start cal calculating, oh, m maybe that person knows something that I don't know, and maybe I can see from how that person is bidding, I can learn something. So there are all these aspects, and of course this is just a, a small example, but, but if you look at it in, in reality, I mean, we look at multi-billion dollar contracts that are sold for you know, timber, oil, spectrum, and all these big things and financial assets. So, so it's very important to understand these very basic questions, and this year's laureates have helped us to understand that. So, so somehow you can uh, be become a winner and at the same time a loser? A loser, in exactly. The yeah, but so, so that, this is something known as the, the winner's curse. So if you go back to this very simple example with this jar full of, full of coins, so suppose that we're all professionals, so on average we, we guess correct. 
But that also means there is someone that overestimates and overpay for this, for this thing. And this is known as something known as the winner's curse. And this has been observed in different markets in the oil industry and, and, and other places that surprisingly often the winners don't make any money. And this is because they are struck by this winner's curse. And this year's price is about how to avoid that. Can you also tell us how, how do the awarded discoveries affect our lives? Yeah, in, in many different ways. As I said before, I mean, whenever we open our, our browser, we will, we will see ads. Maybe if some people find that annoying. Others uh, find it helpful. I leave that to you to decide. But it's, it also determines, uh, auctions also, also determine, you know, how our uh, financial assets are taken care of. So it's, it, affects our pension and retirement savings, it affects the electricity bills we pay, the air we breathe, and the fish we eat are typically also bought by on auctions on fishing quotas and things like that. So, so it affects us all indirectly and sometimes directly, even though we don't think about it. There is always some auction in the background that determines the outcome of something that's, that we see. Uh, can you tell us something about the, this year's laureates? Who are they? Yeah, so, so uh, they are both uh, uh, from the US. Uh, uh, Robert Wilson, he is now, he was born in 1938 or 37, so he's 80, 83 years old, I think, and, and Paul Milgram is 72 years old. So uh, they have been doing lots of different things. Auction theory is only one thing that they can do. I mean, we saw the, at the press conference that Robert Wilson also spoke about his great work in, in game theory. Paul Milgram has also done great work in game theory. They have done work on electricity pricing and, and all, all, you know, in different fields. They have done so much important work. And they have been truly, you know, great scientists for such a long time. You know, Robert Wilson, he's, he published his first paper, I think, in 1967. And he's still working, you know. So that's, that's kind of impressive, you know. I was not even born back, back then. So. <laughs> Did they work together? Yeah, yeah, they, they worked together. And, uh, and uh, the most, I would say, the, the first really successful auction to, to sell very complicated goods like radio spectrum was designed jointly by uh, Wilson and Milgram in 1994. And, and, and they worked together. In fact, they even live on the same street. Uh, day and night. <laughs> yeah, so that actually turned out to be very important when we made the phone call this morning, but I, I'm not sure what I'm allowed to say and not say, so I'll just, I'll just say that they live on the same street so close to each other. Yeah, but maybe you can tell us what did they say when they got the call from of Stockholm? Of course, they, they were very happy, very happy and, and, and also uh, I think a bit shocked like most laureates are when they find out. And I think I don't reveal too much if I say that first they didn't, none of them answer their phones. It was actually kind of, I, you know, so it they was kind sleeping. of, yeah, they were sleeping. Of course, it's like 2 a.m. at their local time when we called them or maybe three. So, so uh, uh, yeah, so it was kind of difficult to reach them, but we managed and actually we had to hang up with Paul Milgram a minute before we started this press conference. So, uh, and my final question, uh, what makes you most excited about this year's prize? What makes me excited is that I think that research, uh, I may be wrong here, but I think that the initial game theoretical and auction theoretical work that they did, they did it because they wanted to solve some, some difficult theoretical problems. What makes me so exciting is that these, you know, theoretical problems turned out to be hugely influential when solving, trying to solve very practical problems decades later. And this I find very fascinating. So this kind of interaction between theory and practice, I think that's just beautiful. Thank you, Tommy Anderson. Thank Thanks. you so much.